hello guys and welcome back to my channel guys in today's video the olu of worry ogiame atua said the third has revised an ancestral course placed on nigeria by his grandfather olu erijuwa the second as a result of injustice meted out to him he made the reverse in his first proclamation on Saturday during his coronation as the 21st ruler of the Olu of Wari Kingdom in Delta State. Guys, please just stay tuned and watch the video and see how he re reversed the course and how he blessed the land and prayed for Nigeria and returned all the courses. Guys, may God bless the Olu of Wari Kingdom, Ogiame Etuwa said the third, may you live long and may God bless you and may you reign in peace and may God bless the land and bless all Nigerians and bless Africa entire as entire of God. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please just stay tuned and watch. Don't forget to like, please don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe and stay connected to this channel. Stay tuned guys. You will all pardon me. I am about to stand and I know the protocol is when I do you all stand but please remain seated and Shikale High God, we warmly welcome you to this distinctly notable day in the annals of our rich heritage and noble ancestry as proud inheritors of the unique essence that has come to define our Iwere Kingdom. We would like to especially welcome His Excellency President Mohammed Buhari who is here represented by the Deputy Senate President. We recognize the distinguished presence of the Governor of Kebi State. Um, the representative, my apologies, the representative of the Governor of Delta State and other traditional rulers present. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, before proceeding any further, we would like to thank Almighty God for the life and reign of our predecessor and most illustrious uncle, His Majesty, Ogiame Ikenwili. In the course of his relatively brief reign, 
he was wholeheartedly committed to the cause of the sustained peace, growth and development of Iwere Kingdom. His place of pride is definitely assured in the pantheon of the Shekiri monarchs and in the hearts and minds of all the Shekiri sons and daughters. May he continue to rest with the Lord. Fellow Ishekiri, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are confident that our ancestors are at this moment smiling down on us, filled with pride and joy as they see us ready and brace for the journey towards repositioning our dear Iwere Kingdom within the prevailing reality of today's Nigeria and the world at large. It is our prayer that in the end we will be true worthy inheritors of their great sacrifice and faith in a strong, progressive, united Iwere Kingdom. We must express our profound gratitude to the proud Ishekiri sons and daughters who stood up to be counted when it appeared that the foundation of our collective patrimony was under threat. While it is not expedient to mention them on this occasion, Chief Johnson, Chief Gabriel Awala, Chief Brown Mene, Chief Roland Orishajafo, Chief C.D. Komi, Chief Edwin Ole, Chief Robinson Ario, and Chief Eugene Ikomi need to be specially recognized. And Dr. Gidibo. Interestingly, just before this precious, curious moment in time, which has brought us to where we are today, that age-long tendency that has always sought to distort and abort our greatness wanted to rear its ugly head in an attempt to truncate our glory and restoration to our original God-given identity. Our kingdom has experienced an unfortunate interregnum in our history that lasted for 88 years. But because the Almighty God had reserved the importance that Ishekiri would be to the formation and the greatness of what would be a successful Nigeria, a force beyond all human reckoning and comprehension did the impossible and brought back this exalted throne and with it a king, Olu Ginoa II. To be witness to the beginning of a process of what would be an independent Nigeria. This time, however, God did not just intervene to truncate and dis any disruptive plots. He ensured that the Ishekiri nation stood united and all Nigeria rallied behind the Ishekiri to ensure that there was no division. We have heard before you all today that we are not and were never offended at any point in time during the process that culminated in this day that has seen me ascend to the throne of my fathers. This is, in every ramification, a very special day. One that has been predestined and divinely ordained by the Most High God. He and He alone could have determined that three months after our Idanike began in May, our coronation will take place today, the only Saturday in this year 2021 that occurs as the 21st day of the month. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this, and this unique August day is truly a day of the Almighty God's divine visitation to Iwere Kingdom. It is not just a divine visitation, it heralds a divine habitation. There is no part of this that has been of my own doing. It was and remains God's divine project. And as a result, the mischief that some had intended, God
God has used it for good. Our Yoruba brothers have an expression. When the palace of the king burns down, it is because a more beautiful one wants to be erected in its place. The taboo that was done by the desecration of our most prized crown jewels made a way for a more beautiful one fashioned by our own royal person while staying true to the inspiration of the one that came from Portugal way back in the 17th century. Before then, however, Olu Ginoa I brought a coral beaded crown from the source in Benin. And that crown adorned the heads of the first six Olus. Olu Atuwashe I brought a pair of silver crowns that would adorn the heads of the next 14 Olus. By the special grace of God, we have the privilege to introduce a new pair of gold and silver crowns to the already rich and beautiful history of the attire of the Olu of Ori. And as the progression of our crown is symbolic for all to see, from coral to silver and now to gold, so shall there be a spiritual, physical, social, and economic manifestation of the progress of our kingdom and our people. While not seeking to reopen old wounds, it is pertinent to recall the fact that following the grave injustice meted out to Olu Erejua II, he visited His Royal Majesty Oba Akenzua II of Benin and recounted his ordeal. In a reaction, a curse was placed on the land by both of them. It is not recorded that Olu Erejua II reversed the curse over the land. Neither is it recorded that Oba Kenzoa II did the same. Most probably, the issue was never revisited. As a firm believer in the intricate interconnectedness between the spiritual and the manifestation in the physical, it is our firm belief that the matter needs to be addressed. Today, in our capacity as Olu, we hereby avow. As the spiritual, cultural, political, and traditional ruler of this land, I, Ogiame Atuashe III, the 21st Olu of Wari, the first son of Olu Atuwashe II, the grandson and direct descendant of Olu Erejua II, who was offended on this throne, I hereby reverse the curse placed over this land. In its place, I release forgiveness and healing to the federal government of Nigeria whose might was used to propagate that offense. And I decree unprecedented and uncommon peace, prosperity, progress, development upon this land. I bring down the government of heaven onto this land and I direct it to flow as a force that can neither be sabotaged, slowed, nor stopped. It goes out as a strong ripple effect emanating from this kingdom to the rest of the Niger Delta, to the rest of the Nigerian nation, and even the African continent. Africa has always been shaped as a gun with Nigeria as its trigger. Today, that gun has been fired 
and full restoration comes out of the barrel. This land begins to yield, yield its riches to us. All that has been hidden hitherto comes to the surface and the world shall marvel as to how we have defied projected economic trends. And this time around we shall be the ones to chart the course of our own destiny. And now, as the Shakiri is restored to its original identity, as one of blessing, we decree, because the Shakiri is blessed, Nigeria is blessed. Because Ishekiri is blessed, Africa is blessed. And now that the foundation has been addressed, it's time to put out a clarion call. We therefore call upon and welcome back all sons and daughters of the Were Kingdom that are dispersed in the diaspora, in Nigeria, the rest of Africa, and all over the world. All sons and daughters of the Were Kingdom who identify as Ishakiri by your father, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother. We welcome you all. Come with your capacity, your expertise, your networks, your ideas and resources to join us in repositioning this kingdom. We also invite our well-wishers and admirers who count it all joy to be identified and associated with us, either by marriage, business ties, or residence. We extend specially towards our neighbors, our Ijo, Urobo, and Ilaje neighbors, a hand of invitation to peace and development as it is not our desire to prosper in isolation. We desire that our neighbors prosper also. We recognize that the peace and prosperity is a shared one, built on righteousness and justice, which is the motto of this our reign and the foundation upon which God's throne is built. At this point, we make bold to say, that our emergence is not simply the filling of a role, we will be redefining the essence of the throne of the Olo of Wari. While we have every intention to lead as led by the Lord himself, we implore all of us to work together and renew our minds and our way of thinking so that nothing, especially internally, hinders us from getting to our desired glorious destination. We should be ready to let go of the old ways that have not encouraged us to advance and not allow sentiments to keep us bound. To launch this new renaissance today, you would have noticed that you would have noticed the crests that have been released. We have taken time based on the information available to rebrand our forebears in such a way that they define their own unique identity, reign, and destiny. As a people so proud of their royal heritage, it is our expectation that in these 20 crests, we, we will be able to further add to the pride and richness of our historical and cultural identity. At this juncture, I want to speak directly to the youths of not just the Ware Kingdom, but the entire Niger Delta. We have heard the narrative several times as to how the Niger Delta is, in term, is blessed in terms of resources. The truth, however, we must look beyond oil and gas and channel our energy in the right direction towards endeavors that will result in added value across the board. What we have is our culture and our identity, and we must use this as an instrument to influence the mind of our youth for their own development in ways that are completely devoid of partisan politics. We will look to honor our women. We will encourage them, build them up, and support them in realizing 
their inestimable potential. And as we do this, we will also see the multiplier effect in the collective development of our people. We will ensure that our women, both old and young, are honored and respected, not only by word, but in actual cultural practice. We will look to actively seek the opinion and counsel of our women and opportunities that avail themselves to the Shekiri Nation will be used to empower our women to enable them to contribute their substance to the growth and development of the Shekiri Nation. So I say to our women today, you will no longer be invisible. I want to begin by formally honoring the two most important women in my life today. Interestingly enough, as God has ordained, one is a beautiful young lady of Edo heritage, and the other is a gracious woman of Yoruba heritage. One addresses the past, while the other addresses the present as well as the future. But as we have come to understand, time is a river. Things are intertwined, just like the complicated fabric that is the Ishekiri nation. By the special grace of God, I am the first Olu of Ori in well over two centuries whose mother is alive and well to witness him sit on the throne. In the same time span, even longer, I am the first eldest son of an Olu to ascend the throne. None of these are taken for granted. It is the perfect will and purpose of the Almighty God to make it so. Where we have unofficially addressed the mother of the Olu as Iolu, simply because she happened to be his mother, I hereby officially and formally bestow the honor on my mother. You shall no longer be referred to as Olori Atuwashe II, but Iolu Atuwashe III. And blessed are you among mothers in the earth. Inevitably, in addressing the present and future, we cannot but consider where we are coming from. Since the arrival of Prince Ginoa from Benin, it is not on record that any Olu has married a Bini woman, nor has any Olu been on record to have been born of a Bini woman. I distinguish between Bini and Edo for obvious reasons. Yet again, I stand before you as the first Olu in five centuries to be married to a Bini woman. In many ways, it's as though today this monarchy has come full circle. And on this note, let me share a personal story of my recently departed father-in-law, Captain Idaho Saokumbo. He was witness to a prophetic word and he himself, unbeknownst to him, played the role of a prophet. Raised by his grandmother in his much younger years, she would say out loud after a long, tedious day, the suffering is too much. In my next life, I will come back and be inside the palace. On the day we paid the bride price in Benin, my father-in-law said to me as he finally placed his daughter into my hands, I named her Aivere Winoya. Roughly translated, you don't abuse precious beads. Ivye belongs to the palace and I, I am entrusting her into your palace. The words of his grandmother and indeed his own words were inspired and honored by heaven. And today the full manifestation has come to pass. 
to my beautiful, loving, and supportive wife. I hereby officially and formally bestow the honor upon you. You shall no longer be referred to as Princess Ivie Emiko, but as Olori Atoashe III. And long may we both reign. As glorious as today is, our future is even more glorious because we have the blessing and backing of the Almighty God. And with this backing comes boundaries. Whatever knowledge in form of our centuries-old heritage or whatever resource in form of our abundant natural and mineral wealth that God has given us, we will neither boast in nor depend on them. Rather, we will depend on God himself who has given us these things. And it, is no, and it is in doing what God says to us, how we follow his instructions, that we will move mightily in dominion, power, and authority. And upon this revelation shall the bedrock and cornerstone of our reign. The earth belongs to God. This throne belongs to God. This king belongs to God. And so we boldly declare that the kingdom of Ori has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. I thank you all for coming to celebrate with us this day and wish you Godspeed as you return to your various destinations. God bless Iweraland. God bless all our neighbors. God bless the outer state. God bless Nigeria. God bless Africa. Dosa